Hello once again, John Flynn here from Flynn Real Estate, serving Southern Ontario based out of the Niagara region. Thank you all once again for tuning in and watching. So this week, um, you know, watching YouTube, just like many of you are, or all of you right now, if you're watching me. So anyway, I'm browsing through and I see uh, Pierre Polyev's latest video about the housing and uh, I click on it and he's talking about uh, this Canadian house here and comparing it to an American house and why is this one cost so much more than the American one. And while, of course, we all have our theories on that, it's not just uh, <laughs> the real estate values. Um, there's also location and whatnot that comes into play. But regardless, he is right uh, that we they do cost significantly more here in Canada than they do in the Niagara Falls side of the states. Anyway, so I'm watching. I'm like, hey, that's my listing, right? Uh, so I thought it was pretty cool. The guy's uh, standing in front of my listing. This was probably a month and a half, two months ago. And of course, he's talking about how rent has doubled and mortgage payments have doubled, et cetera. So anyway, I start thinking about the numbers. And I remembered I actually listed that house when these people bought it too. So I've sold this house a couple of times in my career. And the last time was in 2011. And I remember it was a lot cheaper then. So I go back and I've said, okay, how much cheaper was it? And that house was actually 32% of what it sold for this year back in 2011. So I go and I compare, let's compare the rest of the region. So here's a chart I made. The average price in 2011 was $233,000. And the average price in 2023 collectively for the year total so far is $702,000. So it's a 3x increase in price since 2011, which is astronomical. And if you're comparing it to last year in 2022, and this is not at the peak, this is the whole year average, it was 3.4 times the cost that it was in 2011. So since 2011, house prices in my region are three times what they were 12 years ago, which is pretty crazy. Okay, so now I want to move on to some of the regions I missed from last week for the statistics that I do monthly. So starting off with month over month price change from August to September. You can see many places, again, most places except for out in BC, Greater Vancouver, Fraser Valley, Chilliwack and District, they actually had month over month gains with Chilliwack and District having big gains. But the rest of the areas, Greater Moncton down 5.6%, Ottawa, a lot of people ask about Ottawa, down 4.8% month over month, Windsor, Essex down 4.5%, Nova Scotia down 4.1%, Saskatchewan down 3.9%. Newfoundland and Labrador down 2.5%. Victoria, BC down 1.6%. Interior, BC, Okanagan down 1.4%. Edmonton down 1%. Montreal down just almost 1%. And province of Quebec is even from last month. Moving on to the percent change or loss from the peak. Leading the way out of the areas this week is Windsor. They're down 25.5% from the peak. Fraser Valley almost 22% from the peak. Ottawa down 21 or just under 21% from the peak. Chilliwack and District 15%. Okanagan, BC Interior down 14.3. Nova Scotia down 13.8. Greater Moncton, New Brunswick down 12.3. Victoria, Saskatchewan, Edmonton all under 10%. With Montreal, Greater Vancouver and Newfoundland and Labrador just down around 2.5% from the peak. So I don't think there's any areas left that actually have set new records. Everywhere is down from their peaks, regardless of when they were. And the dollar losses from the peak, Fraser Valley, almost 280,000 loss from the peak. Windsor, Essex, 184 grand. Ottawa, 178,000 from the peak. Chilliwack and District down 135. Okanagan around 100,000, Victoria 86,000, Nova Scotia down 64, Moncton 45,000, Greater Vancouver 32,000, which really isn't anything for that area. Edmonton down 27 grand, Saskatchewan down 25, Province of Quebec down 18, and Montreal down 15, with Newfoundland and Labrador faring the best. They're only at an $8,000 loss. Now let's look at the market balance to see what kind of a market it is in each of these areas. Greater Vancouver, Windsor, Essex, Victoria, and Fraser Valley are in buyer's markets, meaning the buyers have the advantage there, although you wouldn't know it with a lot of the average prices in some of those areas. Balanced markets, Chilliwack, Interior, Okanagan, Ottawa, Montreal, and Province of Quebec. And still in the seller's market when it comes to the sales to new listing ratio is Nova Scotia, Saskatchewan, Edmonton, Greater Moncton, Newfoundland, and Labrador. 
Now, just a few more charts that I've created throughout the week. I posted these on my Twitter previously, but I just want to go over them here. This is just an update on the bank or power of sales in the ITSO, the 20 boards surrounding the GTA. And of course, the latest data just from a couple of days ago from this week, you can see they have been consistently increasing. They were at around 10. Now they're up to 50. Still very low, mind you, but they are increasing. Now looking at the Toronto Real Estate Board, they've gone up about 10% a week since July. So they are increasing consistently right now. I expect that trend to continue given the current economic status of Canada. The next couple of charts, again, it goes back to that theory or the debate that, you know, we're going to need new, more homes, more inventory. There's so many new, new immigrants coming and the population's increasing. So I kind of did some statistics here to say, let's compare the sales to the population increase by year to see if there's any trend we could find. And looking at the chart here, you can see I did find an inverse trend. So when the population increases, the sales decrease, which is an inverse correlation and the opposite of what a lot of people would expect. And of course, recently from 2020, especially, you can see population decreases and the number of sales increases. And when the population, the red line there starts shooting up, the number of sales are decreasing and they continue to de decrease into 2023. Now, I know there is a lag time with immigrants before they can buy, but again, a lot of these immigrants aren't permanent residents, they're students and whatnot. Uh, anyway, let's look at that when you compare the price to the population increase. And again, when you go back to 2008 or 2007, they are going in the opposite direction. They keep crossing each other, price goes up, population decreases, population increases, price goes down. As you get into the 2020s, the trend isn't as strong as the sales, but you can see now in the last year or so, the population is shooting up and the prices have been flat and actually declining this year. And of course, if you ask anyone that knows what their prediction is for either, of course, our population is going to keep increasing and our forecast for prices don't look good. So that inverse trend seems like it will continue for the next two to three years, most likely. Anyway, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.